afternoon leisurely walking through Elisa, reliving happy moments and noting a few changes here and there. The walls and basic structure are the same. The same student union board, groups of students milling about and then surprises like how many girls today wear t-shirts to college. Oh my god, I don't even know this. See, in my time we weren't allowed to wear t-shirts, so this oh, is good. Really? Yeah. I can tell while spending time with Nena that she absolutely loved her experience studying at LSA. For her, it's not like coming back to an institute. It's almost like coming back home for a visit. So what are some of the changes that you're seeing around you today? Well, at one level, it's all so similar and familiar because right. this building in particular, the main building is the same. Okay. But I think the change is uh, the girls come across as more confident, uh, better dressed. <laughs> and uh, I think the fact that the college has new uh, courses as well, because since I was here, the commerce, uh, the bachelor's in commerce degree has been introduced. There's a new course which really uh, caters more to the NGO and uh, journalist community. So uh, the college has moved on in terms of some of those courses as well. You also went to um, Harvard after LSR yeah. and uh, you've had a lot of different experiences when it comes to education as you were telling me about first school in uh, Simla yeah. and then of course here in Delhi. So when you went to Harvard what was that like for you? Was it a bit of a culture shock? Was it uh, exciting? It's both of those. Okay. Certainly a culture shock and also very exciting. Uh, I went to a graduate school, Harvard Business School. So not straight from college here. Right. From after here I worked with Pricewaterhouse as an article clerk doing my chartered accountancy, okay. ticking ledgers and uh, then going to Harvard Business School at the age of 23 right. was a very, very different experience. Uh, the thrill of belonging to one of the best universities in the world, uh, a highly competitive one, one which at the time was actually coming up for criticism for being too competitive oh, really? because there were suicides and people who were not being able to cope with that uh, whole pressure. And, and you think that only happens here? In, you know, well, obviously it, not. It certainly happened there. Yeah. And they were looking at decompressing mm. somewhat but had not quite started that process. So it was somewhat intimidating in terms of reputation. So the relief I had was when I got there to find, hey, there isn't an issue. Yeah. I understand the language of business because I've done economics and my accounting degree. I have no issue with the fact that it's English yeah. because I'm very comfortable with that. There were a number of international students, particularly the Japanese, who really struggled with the fact that education was in English. So when you begin to look at, hey, well, there's no reason for me to feel threatened. Business school was actually a great, fun experience. But the good thing is, I think our education system here prepares us so well for that. And I for see that even today. I mean, I have a, a daughter who's just gone from school to an undergraduate uh, education in the US. And her entire generation has slipped right in. They have no issues in terms of the socializing, and coping right. with the academics. But what about actually having some of that brought here or brought back home? Yeah. What do you think is needed in order to take our education system to the next level? I mean, we've had a lot of talk uh, recently that it, it is required more publicly than before. Yeah. The voices are being heard. Yeah. Um, you know, there is that constant debate of whether or not we should open up um, our system to private education coming yeah. in, allow the Harvards of the world to come here, yeah. or, or whether it's just improving our own infrastructure, what, yeah. what do you think is required? Well, I think if we can stem the tide of kids going abroad, uh, and a lot of it is happening not just because they want to go, uh, some will always want to go, but also as you read in the papers, uh, there are kids who've got into Ivy League colleges there and have not been able to secure admission to Delhi University. If that is indeed the case, then we need to improve number of colleges we have here and the ability of our students who would like to stay here to be here because the price that they are paying offshore is huge yes. so anything between the price which you would pay at a college like LSR which despite being a leading college in the country charges nothing right. 
to what you would pay of $50,000 a year in a US college. There's a huge differential which we should be able to offer an education alternative here which uh, at a standard which people are prepared to therefore stay here. Nena, if you were to think back um, at you know, something that you took away f with you from your years of grooming at colleges back home, um, what would be an example of something that held you in good stead? Early education, right. school mm -hmm. most certainly, because I think that helps to build confidence in oneself. College, yeah. because it builds on that confidence and for those that are late starters maybe provides that confidence as well. And that confidence comes from being able to hold your own in academics, yes, but also in terms of the extracurricular activities you do. So give me an example of, a, of an experience that you know, really influenced you, yeah. if, if you, if you remember of you know, a, maybe a particular debate or a particular moment which... I which think uh, many, many, yeah. I mean in the debates, sometimes you come on on top and sometimes you don't. I remember that first debate and I was a disaster, I was fi finding myself tongue-tied, I was really stretched finding the arguments it just made me make sure I worked harder the next time I researched my subject better I had the points better I rehearsed and just got more comfortable with the fact that I would have a lot more competition and I think it is these opportunities which are huge the opportunities that stretch you again and again that shake you out of your comfort zone so I think some of the biggest turning points have been the failures the things that did not work out and you go back thinking oh my god this is just horrible and then you internalize the problem you analyze it to a point where you know that you can pick yourself up you go back and those experiences are the ones that stand you in the greatest stead sometimes they have made me change direction uh, sometimes they made me change a management style at each stage when I look back they were critical turning points that were huge positives in the long run. They looked like a huge negative when they happened. Will I ever recover? This is horrible. But when you think back, without it, I would not be where I am. So to convert every failure into a success would be a very critical learning. Learning and an important asset. I guess that's very reassuring to hear from someone like yourself. And again, a very important lesson as well. Let's take another very quick break. We'll be back in just a moment in conversation with Nena Lal Kidwai. Every minute, every day is a learning. I see myself as some kind of a intellectual sponge. I'll go anywhere to, to absorb and suck in knowledge.